Wow, hello and good morning, our healthy mind, body, spirit classroom. Did you notice my eyes didn't even dart over there like that? Like, what's the name? Where am I at? What's going on? Where's my blackboard? Day 89, folks. We'll be back here on Tuesday, fingers crossed. All things working for good. We'll be back here on Tuesday with day number 90, 10 days, and we'll, we'll, we'll be on day 100. It's a little cold in the Fairovich residence, but we will be okay. We got our other light working. I don't even know how long with its kind of shorts, but not these shorts. This short. Like that short. Let's do it. What are we doing? Dear Highlights. And we started a new topic, remember, in our Dear Highlights. And this is especially for adults what you can learn about what 75 years has taught Highlights. Has taught us about children. And now, what it has taught us about self-improvement. Another specialty of mine, feelings and confidence, the last one. I had that wonderful thing I put up there on growth and mindset, on mindset, growth mindset versus fixed mindset. You can look the, up that stuff right online under under that and you'll get some awesome videos on the, the science behind it, which is really, really awesome. Using different phrases to get you to think about a growth mindset, you can do it versus a fixed mindset. Well, people who are smart will pass this test. Wah, wah, wah. Did you know from when I speak? It's the only accent I got going on. Not that I don't make efforts in all kinds of areas. Just saying. Let's, um, yeah, self-improvement. Let's, I wanted to look at a, um, to see if I, I don't think I've read the poem, but I might have. I'm not sure. Jordan, age 10, 2019. Always near. Happiness, the ultimate goal, is always there inside, even during the toughest times when you're done and want to hide. Sometimes you feel hope is gone, want to disappear. Feeling good is within reach. Good vibes, always near. Thoughts rule us, happy and sad. They often control your mind. Within you, there are positive thoughts, something you can find. Age 10? I don't think so. Dig deep, find yourself, search within your heart. Happiness is never far, right from the very start. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Um, what I like about this is that it really is. Feeling good is within reach. Good vibes, good vibes always near. They are, aren't they? Aren't they always near? I don't find that they're ever far away, but I don't know. Maybe that's me. Maybe when they're marching me out of this house, I'll be like, where are my good vibes? <laughs> Who knows? I know the bad guy wins a lot. I know it in my mind. I never believed it in my heart. You guys, some of you are bad guys. You know who you are and you know, you know who they are too, don't you? You do. You know who they are. You know who you are. You know who they are. Self-improvement. Letters about self-improvement. In our experience, kids are often interested in self-improvement. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> How so? Ding, 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 ding. No, 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 no. If the volume of letters we receive on the subject is any indication, developing better personal habits or improving skills is top of mind for many kids. Kids, when helped by caring adults, can understand that trying their best is key to being happy and successful in life. But they also worry about ridicule when they fail. And they worry about disappointing the people who care about them. Welcome to the club. We urge them to give up perfectionism as a goal and focus more on simply doing their best. 
we do have an ap epidemic of perfectionism and it's the, ironic how far below we can fall when that's an epidemic huh mm. okay that was the only highlighted part so happy i read a paragraph i'm gonna start in the middle Marisol. Dear Highlights, I'm 10 years old. I've been having problems with myself. I seem to have any patience. I'm always getting screened at. I don't know if it's a stage or what help help miserable i i'm not understanding this so you're 10 marisol marisol one of the things you want to do is you want to proofread you want to proofread if you're writing into a paper and you might want to even have an adult that you trust with this letter help you proofread it because there you are forever on the pages of this book with your near perfect grammar. Dear Highlights, I'm 10 years old. I've been having problems with myself. I seem to have any patience. Let's say it's lax. Let's say the word is lax. I seem to lack any patience. I'm always getting screamed at. I don't know if it's a stage or what. Well, it seems like other people lack patience around you, doesn't it? If you're always getting screamed at. I don't know. Let's see here. What, what, let's see what Dear Highlights has to say. Dear Marisol, it is often very hard to have patience, especially at your age. When you want things to happen right away, you do learn to have more patience as you grow older. It takes a lot of practice and determination. You will probably learn how to control yourself better as you grow. Not all adults do. I know men get angrier. Lots of men do. You told us that you seem to be getting yelled at a lot. It would probably be a good idea to sit down with mom or dad or whoever is yelling at you and try to talk about the problem. You could ask what you could do better to make things better. It is very important to talk things over. Together with your parents, you might find a solution that makes everyone happier. One of the things that I did for today's class, the next class after lunch, which is our classroom engagement, is that I did what we would normally call a chore chart for you. So today for our our um critical thinking class we have chore charts chore charts and aprons home making chore charts and aprons to be honest with you i don't know if i'm going to make the apron but we're going to do something crafty and it likely will have to do with sewing because um one of the actually uh recommendations for that class was um get a sewing machine and I have to say, I've had a sewing machine my whole life. I asked for it for a birthday before I got married. I'm pretty sure I got my sewing machine before I was 20. Yeah, I did. I had my sewing machine before I was 20. And my mom taught sewing class for 4-H. Does anyone even know what that is? And um, so I, I learned how to sew. And one of the recommendations on the website, let me get that website up here for you. It is Old Fashioned Homemaking 14 Tips from the Past. I bet I have it up here. No, I don't. Let's see here. I can get it right up here. Nope. Yep. So here's what I was... Um,
reading and for today for our classroom um, engagement class. And so this is 14 tips from the past. Old fashioned homemaking, 14 tips from the past. Because I wanted to look up homemaking. And so here, here are some tips that we're gonna go quickly over, but I do like some of them. Keep a well-stocked sewing basket. That I really do think is an excellent suggestion. And you can't keep a well-stocked sewing basket for no reason at all. You got to have a sewing machine, right? You can't, you know, well-stocked sewing basket is supplies for a sewing machine. So things to get engaged, right? So that's coming up in our in our other class in our classroom engagement. But one of the things that, well, I saw the picture here. So this is what made me think about it, watering flowers, right? So there are things that you can do, I think, to get yourself engaged. And one of the things that I got from this class was whoever does, whoever, what kid ever volunteered, volunteers to make themselves better by saying by helping around the house without being asked well I thought maybe there's a lot of people who might want to do that right if you didn't find it to be like excruciatingly painful to do the work right maybe you hate doing dishes it's excruciatingly painful but You could find other things you want to do. I was thinking I had to do dishes for years in the house. Was that fair? Was that justice? What was that exactly? Not like you didn't have other dirty dishes. Just whatever. Okay, so get yourself engaged in things. And I might even say, you know, you want to learn patience? Learn a skill like sewing, which you could learn very easy. My mom, at, at a very early age, you're here at 10 in 1982. So Marisol, if you haven't taken up sewing yet, it might be a good time. It helps with patience. It really, really does. And for those people who are perfectionists, who think that they're perfectionists, it well, here's a perfect test for you. Go find a pattern and follow the pattern. Let me see if you're a perfectionist then. It was like, give me that elastic. I'm going to make this skirt. Whatever way I can. And that's how I sew. A little skill. A little determination. A little impatience. I've made some things. I'm just saying. I've made some things. All my kids' Halloween costumes, which cost me... You know, minimum $70 for each costume. <laughs> I made them. And that's where I find all my material. Uh-oh. It's a cough coming up from that. Hold on. Tickle's still there. <laughs> <laughs> Going away, slowly but surely. Who's surely? I don't know, but I have a plan, and I'm Josh, age 10, 2006. Sitting in the car, thinking everything's crazy, headed to the house to lie on the couch, to be lazy, going to get up in the morning to go to school, that's an everyday thing, seems to be cool. I like my teacher. She teaches me a lot. She tries to help me be very smart. I always have homework and I sometimes get behind, but I'm still going to start listening and following my mind. I promise to try as hard as I can. And that's Josh Taylor's plan. Josh Taylor, I love your plan. I love it. And I love your little poetry there as well. 
Let's see what Veronica has to say to highlights. We had a play a few months ago at school. At school. One of the songs we sang was Baby Beluga. For a long time, I couldn't get it out of my head. Could you help me get it out of my head? Veronica, age eight, will excuse you, that was 1993. We actually had a, a, a different question similar to this one, so we're going to see what they have to say. There's a woman named Patty who works at Highlights. She hears songs in her head all the time. We asked her if she had any advice for you. Patty says that it can be frustrating to hear the same song over and over. After a while, even a favorite song can get bothersome. Not for me. I've heard a song probably a hundred times in a row. My husband could vouch for that, you know, if he could vouch for anything. So she pretends that that song is on the radio station and in her mind, she changes the station. She hums a few bars of the new song in her head and concentrates on it. The new song replaces the old one. Then when she gets tired of that song a few days later, she changes it. Sometimes though, a song on the radio or a commercial jingle works its way into her head and that's the tune she hears. Patty usually gets enjoyment from hearing music all the time. When she wants to relax, she tries to imagine a slow, soothing song. When she wants to get some work done, she imagines a song with a quick tempo. Patty used to think that everyone heard music in their head, and she was amazed to find out that not many people do. So try not to let this bother you too much. Instead, think of it as your special gift. You could try learning to play an instrument or joining a choir. Maybe the music in your head is trying to tell you that music can be an important part of your life. Music is a very important part of my life. I did not realize that not very many people heard music in their head. I thought everybody did until just that very moment that I read it just now. I, th I just learned something new. I thought everybody did. And I have a song in my head all the time. But I have a song in my head all the time because I listen to music just exactly like um, the, the advice, co of advice columnist said Patty does, right? That she, uh, so, so she listens to music all the time. I listen to music. And so what's the song that I have in my head? Well, a lot of times the song that I have in my head is the song that I wake up my alarm to, right? Which is right now is uh friends by tyler braden which i just love and the thing about that is this i love that song so it could play in the background in my head all day long and i don't care that was a luke combs song um just one number away right that was i so i was like that was playing in my head but i like that song so it doesn't bother me and so the advice there too the advice there to change the station, I, I think that's good advice um, and really good advice, in fact, because if just exactly what the advice columnist said here is that if I, I might sometimes want to change, even though a lot of times I like the song, right? Um, like I, I like a lot of casting crowns, but they're slow songs and they're not for every time, everything, especially if I want to get ready for something. I'll change the song in my head and I can easily find a song that I like to change it in my head. The visual she's giving with making it a radio station, that's really smart. It's real smart. I think it's really smart so that you, you really, really reinforce changing that song in your head. So we spent a lot of time on what I thought was kind of a silly question. I really like, oh, yeah, that's why I like um, this book a lot because the advice advisors i keep when i say advisors and then i say advise advice columnists the advice columnists really do give some really good advice dear editor i am 11 years old and ever since i have been in school gym class has never been my has never been my bag how can i improve the kids don't think i'm too good either this is steph age 11 1976 Dear Steph's, boy, these are a lot of old ones, aren't we? 1976, 
1993, 1982. Wow. I always wonder what these kids turned into as adults, right? 1976, 86, 96, 2006, 26. That's 40 years minus four is 36 plus 11, 46, 47 years old. Steph is 47. Dear Steph, not all of us can be equally good in everything. Try as hard as you can, but understand that there are others who are not very who are very good in gym class and may not be as good in other subjects such as arithmetic. Just because we are not good in something does not mean that we should not keep on trying. It is probably good for us to have the experience of not being successful in everything we do. It helps us appreciate more those things that we are good at and those things that other people are good at, right? If you you have never been musically inclined and you saw somebody play a violin and you thought it was beautiful or a violin but was a fiddle and you love that song and you thought it was amazing because anyone who could play that I think is amazing no matter on what scale they're playing as a fiddle or as a violin. Wow, to me, right? So you can also learn to appreciate it in other people as well. When you're not good at something, but you see like somebody's like, whoa, they're a savant. Who can even do that? How can anybody even know that? Napoleon Dynamite. Dear Highlights, my brother left his email account on and I went on the computer and there was this folder that said my love and I clicked on it and read his love emails. I feel really guilty, but I don't know what to do. Please help. Anonymous 2014. That's a good one. Woo! That's a good one. Yeah, you can't unsee some things, can ya? Can ya, Anonymous? You can't unsee some things. Maybe you shouldn't be looking because you can't unsee some things. Oh, good letter, Anonymous in 2014. Dear friend, we think it's important that you're listening to your feelings of guilt and discomfort, and we are proud of you for wanting to improve the situation. Absolutely. You don't go crush that guilt and shame. Why would anyone feel that way? I'm so good. No, it's good that you felt that. It was, it was a good response that you felt that. Very good. I got to turn my face this way because my hair this way. Yeah. Out of hot water. What? Well, not exactly out of hot water. But let's put it that way. It sounds as if your guilty feelings are telling you that you've done something wrong and it's time to apologize. Though we know it can be scary to admit to doing something wrong. Though we know it can be scary to admit to doing something wrong, the guilt and bad feelings you're experiencing now are worse than telling your brother the truth and dealing with his anger. And that mistrust that you put between you is going to be worse. It builds up. His reaction will be based on the truth and will ultimately help you both work toward a better relationship. The relationship between you and your brother is very special. We encourage, and, it, and it still is, even though you, you misplaced that confidence for a minute. Because it happens all the time. I mean, not to make it a simple thing, it probably, your brother's going to be mad. Your brother's going to be mad because you know secrets. Ugh. We encourage you to do what you can to make that relationship as good as it can possibly be. You and he won't always agree. You will make mistakes and you will sometimes act unwisely, but that's part of being human. Mistakes and even regrets such as you now have don't make you a bad person. You are growing and learning. The good part is that our mistakes don't keep us from being wonderful people. True that. It is to your advantage to tell your brother what happened and apologize. It's to your advantage to do that. It's not easy. It's not going to have a positive outcome necessarily, but it's to your advantage to do it. To tell your brother what happened and, and apologize. You can t even tell him that the guilt you felt since snooping is not something you want to experience again or not something that you're proud of. The guilt that you felt has been so overwhelming you had to tell him. That's a good suggestion, absolutely. 
You can tell him earnestly that you have learned your lesson and will be even more conscious about respecting his privacy. He may get angry, but that will not last forever. He will still love you, we assure you. A big part of growing up is learning to accept the consequences of your choices. You can take this experience and turn it into something good. It will help to build trust between you and your brother. And that's huge. And you now know that hiding something you've done is not fun at all. This knowledge will help prevent you from doing a similar thing again. Bravo, bravo, highlights, bravo. You are impressive. You impress a psychologist, a, a positive health social psychologist. Impressed, unimpressed, good advice. It's not like Amy Poehler advice, which was funny. That was so funny, Amy Poehler. I think you and I could be really good friends because you remind me of my sister. Which is why I probably think that, but she's really been a little distant lately. The reflection in the mirror. The reflection in the mirror, a girl smiling back at me. The reflection in the mirror, the same smile fades when the girl remembers what she had done. The reflection in the mirror, a tear runs down her cheek. The reflection in the mirror, the tear now vanishes when she realizes what she must when she realizes what she must do. The reflection in the mirror, the reflection vanishes as the girl no longer has to face herself, but has to face someone else. Danielle, age 11, 1996. Somebody needs to give that to everybody. That's awesome, Danielle. I think I just did. If anyone's paying attention, I just gave that to everybody, Danielle. 1996. Yeah, that's some courage, that's for sure. And some insight, because that is just exactly like what our author was saying, was that that regret sticks with you. It sticks with you. So until you face and you could you know we're in, we live in a world where everyone is avoiding facing anything right that's the world that we live in right now because we don't understand the freedom of facing our undesirable unacceptable behavior even the unacceptable unacceptable to us right what do we do Oh, did I do that? Well, I was drunk. I don't remember. Unacceptable behavior starts coming up. I was drunk. I don't remember. Right? Or whatever it was for you. I don't think we have as young, many young people getting drunk like that. But binge drinking, you guys still do, don't you? Don't you? Admit it. Somebody's buying that alcohol. We're not all over 40. Too much television. When I came home, the first, when I come home, the first thing I do is turn on the television and I watch television the whole day long and I forget to do everything that I have to do. My mother says, if I watch television too much, my eyes will get bad. Is that true? Who cares about your eyes get bad watching too much television? Why the hell isn't your mom telling you to do your homework and just turn off the TV? Where's your mom? In La La Land? Honest to gosh. Somebody needs therapy, and it's your mother. Asha, age 7, 1985. I knew it was a while ago, so I knew that Asha wouldn't worry so much, I guess. Dear Highlights, I always use the computer and can't stop. I feel that I'm getting and I, I feel that I'm not getting any smarter, and the computer is warping my brain. Hmm. P, 1978. 1978? On the computer? 1978. It must have been a tank. How much did your computer weigh? 1978? I'm not sure if I believe all these letters. I've seen pictures and poetry coming out of the, you know, in the mouths of babes. I don't know. 
Dear Highlights, I'm playing on Minecraft multiplayer server and have gotten addicted to it. Now I want to have a multiplayer server that anybody can join. Please help me get unaddicted. Anonymous 2016. See what happens also? They stop, le they stop leaving their names. Everyone's used to never putting their name, getting, never getting their name attached to anything. Dear friend, just like many other, and here's, oh, this is Anna Lee, age 10, drew that picture. Again, that's hard to believe. Age 10, drew that picture, seriously? How do, I mean, at age 10, I don't even know if I was sure about where the eyeballs went. And that's the fact, because eyeballs actually go about in the middle of your head. Look at that, see? See, here's my head. And actually, it's the middle of your face. Where's the middle of your face? Right about there, isn't it? That's where your eyes start. And then go up from there. Kind of. Just like many other people, it is likely that you use the computer out of habit. The only way to break a habit is to force yourself to do something different. A world of exciting and interesting activities is just waiting for you. Write a list of things you've always wanted to do, learn, make, or try. Love it. Refer to this list when you feel the urge to hop on the computer. Things that you love to do. You love to do them. Computer. Oh, something else. Remember, you control the computer. It doesn't control you. Well, this person didn't really know about AI. It may be controlling you, right? There might be a medicine for that. The medicine is HMBS, healthy mind, body, spirit. Your medicine is right here, the teacher in the classroom. That's your medicine. You knew it. Take your medicine. Whispers just like, oh my gosh, my mother is turning over in her grave. Yeah, you're, yeah, I'm sorry, because your mother did pass away. Yeah. But she had the common sense to, like, not yell, apparently. And I do not. We're going to do one more letter, which is the beginning of this, okay? Dear Highlights, I have a problem taking care of the dog. I'm supposed to take care of her every day after school. I usually forget. This forgetfulness by Beth from 1981, I think that's BS. We remember. I remember the chores I had to do. Every single day I remember the chores I had to do. I put it out of my mind is what I did. Call a spade a spade. I pushed the thoughts and procrastinated is what I did until the day got away from me. And that's the same thing over here with... Asha, I forget to do everything that I have to do. I don't think that that's the truth, Asha. I think you procrastinate, and every time that that pops up into your mind, you're like, whoa, turn the TV louder. Play another video game, and I'll get to it. That's what I think happens. Dear Highlights, my dad said I can get a pet lizard in a few years, but I have to show that I'm responsible. How can I do that? Well, join me in our in our classroom engagement. True that, a lot of stuff is going on here about think of something exciting to do here. Classroom engagement, I'm gonna be talking. I always talk about something exciting to do. Uh, chore chart today. A homemaker's chore chart and an apron. Or something. Wouldn't mind making slippers. Honestly, I wouldn't mind learning how to make shoes. I honestly wouldn't mind learning how to make shoes. I would totally, I would totally design shoes. I would. Dear Matthew, it's great that you are thinking ahead about this. Many people get a pet because they know it will give them a lot of enjoyment but they don't plan for all the responsibilities that go with having one. Your lizard will be dependent on you for all of its needs and they live a long time and they poop in the cage and it stinks. It wouldn't be fair to take out a pet and then not give it the care it requires. Perhaps your dad has some things in mind that can help you sh help show you 
help you show how responsible you are. For example, taking on chores and doing them regularly without being reminded will show you that you are dependable. And these are chores that you can enjoy doing. That's what this classroom engagement is about today. Caring for a lizard requires daily responsibilities such as feeding it and less frequent chores such as cleaning its cage, but that's still frequent. I clean out Lucy's uh, litter box every other day well, unless I forget, that might be the every three. And that is, I should clean it out more than that. It's not, you know, it's big. So it's not, but you know, but daily, they said that not, not on a daily. No, actually cleaning out a cage. If you don't want to sit with poop near you, then, then I'm sure your pet doesn't either. And the poop is in the lizard's cage. At least Lucy can get out of there, right? Lucy gets out of her litter box and away from it, right? Lizard, that poop is in its cage. Now, granted, it's a lizard. So it's poop to I care about the smell ratio might be much lower than mine. Caring for, or we already said that. So perhaps you can take a weekly task to show that you can keep up with both. You can check your school or public library for books about caring for lizards. Then you'll know what tasks you'll be responsible for when you get your pet, I think that's a really good idea. Or look it up online too, right? To find out for sure what it is that you can do to make sure that your pet doesn't die in your hands. This is Dr. Annette Fairovich. We are still doing self-improvement. We've had some repeats, a little bit of repeats on this, on self-improvement, but that's okay. We might move on to the next one on Tuesday when I return here in our healthy mind, body, spirit classroom. Yeah, um, Amy Poehler, I honestly, gosh, that that was is really funny what you're doing on your podcast with pretending you're a doctor, but you can't, whatever. You have to go doctor? This is Dr. Annette Farovich with Healthy Mind, Body, Spirit. I'm the teacher. Thanks for joining me here in our HMBS classroom. One of two new classrooms, the other one is, is classroom engagement, which we'll have after lunch that I keep talking about. Thanks for joining me.